Why do you say a circular economy is best to sustain the earth and society? And what is a circular economy? Well, a circular economy is one which circulates things. Yeah. Because what we are living through is basically this um, in, in extractive economy becoming so perverse. Yeah, You extract from the soil and society, but beyond a point, you've extracted so much, all the money is sitting here with the billionaires, you get an in upside down pyramid, which can topple any time, whether it topples with a climate disaster or a species extinction or a COVID pandemic. But all of those are topplings of a precarious system. A circular economy, A, recognizes that nature works in cycles. Nature circulates nutrition. That's the first cycle. The second is nature circulates water. That's the hydrological cycle. So there are two laws of nature, nutrition cycle, hydrological cycle. A circular economy begins by respecting those two laws of nature, then developing practices that reinforce nature's laws. Organic farming returns organic matter, so it reinforces the nature's recycling. Good organic farming conserves moisture in the soil. It then starts to circulate water. Both of these together are an answer to climate change. For me, climate change will only be addressed when we realize that we have to start recycling. And most people have forgotten, you know, like Mr. Gates is citing Harbour Bosch, but the person who really developed organic chemistry and plants was Liebig. And I had to write a foreword to his 1896 book or something, on the law of recycling. And he's saying, I'm having to write this because they've taken my knowledge and commodified it and distorted it. But this is not what I was saying. I was talking about the law of recycling, not buying commodities, guano and everything else that could be bought that time. And so recycling is nature's laws. And I would say now to build circular economies in our times is to consciously follow the way nature works and the circular economy in society is then mimicking nature, but adding the element of justice that you give back. So you redistribute, you know, you don't keep taking. And our work in Navdani has shown that when we practice circularity, farmers' incomes go up tenfold. Tenfold more the farmers earn because more is returning. In the global supply chains, farmers are earning one to 5% of the, what the consumer pays. The rest is all profits for the processors and traders. And we get junk food. Yeah. No one. The farmer loses, the earth loses, the eaters lose. In a circular economy, the earth gains, the farmer gains, the eater gains. How does the amount of minerals in the soils differ today versus 100 years ago? What effect does that have on people and kids? And why has the soil become deficient in certain minerals? Well, from the studies I've seen in the industrial West, food has lost about 60 to 70 percent of its nutrition. And because industrial farming only measures yield per acre, and Bill Gates' book is only about yields, 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 but yields are only about the mass, not about the nutrition. So you're measuring nutritionally empty food and saying I'm growing more food, you know, but a bigger apple, which is nutritionally empty, is not more nutrition. And research is showing that an old apricot in Sardinia is equal to 56 modern varieties of apricots in the phytochemicals and nutrients that it has. Uh, so about 60 to 70% loss in industrial societies. But my, you know, my valley is only a few, Decades ago, it started to have chemicals. So we did a 20 year study recently with the top soil ecologist of India. And this is the data he produced. So the green is the organic farms where on everything, on carbon, on nitrogen, on zinc, on magnesium, in the soil, these nutrients are more and therefore in the plants, these nutrients are more and we are bringing back nutrition in the plants. Across the board, every nutrient has disappeared in chemical soils, every nutrient. So you're getting zinc deficiency leading to depression. 
you're getting magnesium deficiency leading to attention deficit disorder, but it's treated as a psychiatric, both are treated as a psychiatric disease to be treated by big pharma. Why are we losing our nutrition? First, because that militarized mind said soil is an empty container and plants only need nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium from factories. Plants need much more. And where does the much more come from? Those amazing living organisms in the soil whose food is the organic matter we give them. They give us the nitrogen and the magnesium, they make it. So this input output calculus in the mechanical paradigm is so wrong because the soil is living, the plants are living. And as long as we nourish the living processes through the web, soil food web, plant food web, insect food web, we will have more health per acre. And that's why I measure not yield per acre, but nutrition per acre and health per acre. And we can feed two times the world if we protect the earth. Tell us more about factory farms and why do we have them? <laughs> Well, I think we have factory farms because a bunch of powerful men love to torture other beings. <laughs> they just love it. Yeah. For me, factory farms are animal prisons. All good farming has always had, and Albert Howard has said it so clearly, all good farming has to have annual crops. It has to have trees, farm trees. And it has to have animals because that's what allows the recycling. The plants eat the straw and we eat the grain. Now we are feeding animals the grain. And there's a competition between animal feed and human food. Then the plants give us cow dung. And we worship cow dung. You know, we have a festival in November to worship cow dung. It's not a waste and a pollutant and a stinky, gassy, methane waste from a CAFO. Cow dung is the most celebrated product of a cow. And that's what gives future life to the soil. And we have in this book that, uh, you know, on, on, on biodiversity and agroecology, we have about a hundred ways of creating compost in India using the cow urine, the cow dung. It's all in this book. It's available right now from Westwell Press in India, but it will be available from Synergetic Press next year in the United States. So factory farms are animal torture chambers, just like Human beings were put in concentration camps. That mentality is exactly what allows this to happen. But then there's profits. A, the profits come from the fact that animal feed trade is more profitable than food and more subsidies go there. But there's also profits in the fact that when you start putting animals, then you can start doing all kinds of owning of animals like you own the sea. They just did gene editing to have hornless animals, except that they got bacterially infected. Why do you need to remove horns? I mean, in India, we celebrate the horns. Why do you need to remove the, the little tail of the pigs? Why do you need to remove the beaks of the animal? Because you put people in, you know, the animals so close, you actually encourage what's called cannibalism in them. And then you have to start torturing and, you know, and you start doing genetic engineering of animals to fit into your torture mode. And so I really believe animals should be free. Animals should absolutely be free and they should be grass fed because they're herbivores and they're not bean wars. They're not soya bean GM soya wars. They're not Amazon GM soya wars. So I think we should see an end to factory farms, absolute end to factory farms. <laughs>